Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Susan Brown, director of the Center for Better Bones. Today we're going to talk about homeopathy. To me, and we have a very special guest to talk about that. Homeopathy to me, to me homeopathy is one of those magical medicines. It's actually an energy medicine. It has a big history and truly I've seen miracles with homeopathy. So I want you all to learn a bit about homeopathy. You may find that it's very good for you in your quest to build better bone health, better energy, reduce anxiety. So today we have Dr. Demers, who is the medical director of the Himalayan Institute in Honesdale, Pennsylvania. She is a double board certified physician, an internal medicine doctor, and an integrative medicine doctor. She works a great deal in complementary medicine. Later I'm gonna tell you how you can get a hold of her if you wanna consult with Dr. Demers, but right now she's gonna tell us about homeopathy. So welcome, thank you very much. Thank you, it's great to be here. Thank you very much. Can you tell us, a, can you give us a little, well, what is homeopathy? How does it work? Sure, sure. So homeopathy is a energy medicine, as you already said. So it's a natural medicine like vitamins and herbs, but it's made in a very particular way. Um, homeopathy is made by taking things from nature, all kinds of things, plants, minerals, metals, um, even weird things like snake venom and dog milk and all those things are diluted in a very precise serial manner So dilution and they're shaken and then they're diluted and they're shaken So you might if you've ever bought homeopathy You might notice that always there's a number after the name you might say 6 C or 30 C or 200 C the C stands for centesimal which means you know, like like century one one to 100 so it's been diluted 30 times one to 100 and so that's a lot of dilution. In fact, my teacher used to say, it's, you know, homeopathy is a lot of nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because there's hardly any molecule of that active plant agreement, ingredient in that remedy. Right, so after about 6C, there's no more molecules. There's just a vibration. So somehow in that, that process of dilution, the energy of the thing, the, original, the, the substance is preserved while we dilute away the physicality of it. And so for me as a, biochemist, basically, undergraduate training, I thought homeopathy sounded like quackery. How can something that's diluted so much have an effect on us? Yeah. And what it pushes, and, and then I saw a bunch of people like you get, be, get better from it, be affected yeah. by it. And so what it does is it really puts right in front of us this concept that we are not just physical. We mm -hmm. are an energy being. And that really right. are, so in yoga we, we call that the pranic body, the, the, the energy body, and that's actually the scaffolding that holds up or supports the physical body. So if I can bring balance to that energy body, then the physical body is more able to move toward healing. That's really how it works. I see. Yeah. So when we choose a remedy for someone, we're, we're looking to choose an energy that complements or that resonates with them to simply support their own healing power. It isn't like a, like a drug that pushes you in a, in a direction. It's really about supporting you, your body to, to heal itself. Um, so homeopathy yeah. has been around for a long time. Um, yeah, it has a big history, right? Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's, uh, it started out, I mean, I think there's actually this law of similars. This, well, it's yeah, been the, something like it's been around for a long time, but it's, the history says it started out in Germany with a, a guy named Dr. Samuel Hahnemann back in the... 1700s, I think, but it, so it evolved by a guy who was a, a doctor and a chemist, and he was looking for this concept of minimal dose. That how, because he was, you know, at the time, medicine was really harsh. Like people yeah. were getting bled to death, and they were giving things like sulfur and mercury and things that killed yeah, them, yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, so he was looking for could we give people smaller doses of things and have them have an effect. And the story is that he took. Um, a Peruvian bark, to a, 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 a remedy called chinchona, but he, he, he took this plant and it made him sick, right? And at the time that was being used to treat malaria, but it gave, when he ate it in substance, it gave him symptoms like malaria. It gave him this up and down fever, these intermittent fevers. And he was like, wait a minute, the thing that treats intermittent fever in people is what is what gave me intermittent fever in a big dose, but in a small dose it treated it. So that was like his eureka moment, that, that, a, that, a, that a tiny dose of something can be used as a medicine. Even in, 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 in a bigger dose, it's a poison. So 
that got his brain thinking. So he started diluting things to see what what they did with people. So there's a whole there's yeah. a, just a endless volumes of what what are called provings, where people took a substance to see how did it affect them when they were well. Did it give them joint pain? Did it give them anxiety or nightmares or whatever? And they people wrote that stuff down in books. It sounds crazy nowadays. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But they kept track of the symptoms that a substance created. And then when someone came in with those symptoms, they would take that same thing and dilute it and give it to the person as a medicine. So that's why you think of homeopathy as like treating like. Yes, exactly. So a person says, I have achy joints, then they find the, rem the substance that might cause that diluted down to really just an energy field, right. and it may be, and it affects that body to get you back a healing response. Exactly, so really, tan so um, if someone comes to me and says, I can't sleep, I feel like I've drunk a pot of coffee, I haven't drunk a pot of coffee, but I feel like I'm jazzed up, I might give them homeopathic coffee to address that sleep problem. Or if someone comes to me with, with like poison ivy, where they have these these, these blisters and this itching, we actually give people um, rust tox, which is poison ivy diluted out to a remedy. Yeah, yeah. Or, or the, that could be for uh, chicken pox, because it's the yeah. same kind of skin eruption. So it's, so those things make sense. Like, oh, yeah. I see how that would be a similimum. It's, a, it's this, the thing that could cause a symptom now is being used in a dilute dose to treat that same symptom. Yeah, and that, that does, it's a very nice way to explain it, because it's hard to, understand why I'm taking this uh, this snake venom or this remedy, but that your like is treating like in a certain sense and very dilute. I've heard it say that homeopathy is kind of like the water you shake it up in gets the memory of that energy and the water then carries that energy and takes it into the body. Yeah, we don't really know. Because there's very few <laughs> atoms, we don't know. We don't know. But yeah. we do know that it works. Like my first case was with a, my child who had colic forever. My friend was a homeopath. She gave him a little remedy after a year being up all night. That guy slept through the night after that. And it was one of those things. He found the right remedy, totally corrected the problem. Right. And that can be the problem, to find that right remedy f that matches that person's symptom profile. That's and really the art of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and that reminds me that there's kind of different types of homeopathy in the sense that there's this over-the-counter, like you mentioned, poison ivy, take a low dose, my son's colic that's kind of first aid homeopathy. Exactly. But tell us, there's also a deeper homeopathy how, how, that, where you're really dealing with deeper problems? That's right, so homeopathy can be used to treat common problems, headaches, stomach aches, flus, colds, things that are acute, that are gonna go away anyway. Um, and, and that's called like layperson homeopathy, totally like fine, it. anybody can do that. And there's also a way, you, if you have a chronic disease, um, that homeopathy can be used to help your body heal from that. And then you probably wanna see a trained homeopath to help you find the right remedy to treat the whole of you. Um, and even people use it as a transformational medicine where, where people can, it can help strip away what's holding you back from your life. So it can be used yeah, even yeah. when you're well to just help you be more well. Um, yes, I deal with a homeopath from India, which has a great many homeopaths. And um, she's working on this level of trying to find the right remedy to get my whole constitution back into balance, and it's sort of reflected by a tendency to anxiety. So she says, you know, when we get the anxiety under control, we know that the body is moving in a more healthy direction, but it takes often a long time to find the right remedy. You keep going through different remedies. Some do a little. So what's important here is there's two types of homeopathy. There's over-the-counter, what you call layperson homeopathy. There's wonderful books on that. First aid homeopathy is really terrific. And then there's more profound where you work with a professional like Dr. Demers, Demers, who spends a long time trying to find your precise remedy, and exactly. who you talk to extensively, and you bare your heart to, because homeopaths <laughs> like quirky things. They like to know all the ins and outs. Right. So just before we, so tell us a little bit about, like, as you know, most of our clients are interested in, interested in bone health. Um, can you give us, and most of our clients may have a degree of anxiety. Are there some over-the-counter homeopathic remedies that might be, have, be of interest? Absolutely. So. Generally, chronic disease like osteoporosis would be considered to be a chronic disease and, and need more of a professional approach. But that said, there's still, it's safe to take homeopathy. You, you, it's not going to hurt you. Okay, right? that's important. Thing. So there are low-dose remedies that are made from minerals. They're called cell salts. Um, and they're made from like calcium and magnesium and phosphorus and sodium. Right? So there are, there are remedies that have calcium in them that actually help build bone. So one's called Calcarea Carbonica um, 6X, so that's 
only been diluted six times, one to ten. So it's it's much more of a physical uh, a physical substance. Ah, I see. Um, calcarbonica, so cal six calcarbonica, six carbonica, and then calcarea phosphoricum, which mm -hmm. is also a calcium phosphorus mixture. So those two I've given people. I've heard of those. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and they might help along with your nutrition program for bone. Right, build. So they help your body absorb calcium, basically. They help, they're, they, they're called tissue salts, which means they, they are nourishing to the, to the tissues. Ah, uh, okay. So that's a, 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 a nice um, kind of foundational support. Um, there's also one called symphytum, which is really about building bone and countering or helping your body heal from fracture. Symphytum. It's spelled with lots of Y's. S Y M P H Y T U M. Um, by the way, all the weird, all, all the weird names in homeopathy is because whether you're here or in India or in England, where there's a royal homeopathic society, um, all the remedies are the same. They're all the the Latin name of the substance. So symphytum will be the same in, in the U.S. or England or India or wherever else you go across the world. Germany. Symphytum. Symphytum might help with healing fractures. Healing bones. Again, like a healing. dose of 6C or something like 30. Yeah, you know, usually low doses are what we start with. Yeah. Like a 6X or a 30C. In the health food store, they sell low doses. Yeah. And usually higher doses are, are reserved for the Profession, more professional yeah. Yeah. level. You know, you brought an in interesting point. That in England, we, we always learn that the king and queen of England use homeopathic remedies. That's right. That's one of the favorite medicines of those, the royalty. Right. Exactly. So what about, just one last thing about anxiety now. Are there some, like, we give certain herbs, we give certain vitamins. Any over-the-counter homeopathic remedies people might think about? There actually are many remedies that are for sleep or for mm -hmm. anxiety or for calming the nervous system down. Right. So, like, for instance, I just talked about, about, about tissue salts. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's one called Califos. Um, and so that would be a, a salt that's for calming the nervous system down. And then remedy-wise, I mean, non-cell salt, um, um, there are many. So like arsenicum album, so made from arsenic, don't get afraid, it's diluted. Um, it's one of my favorite remedies. But it's also for people who are anxious and restless and maybe you're up in the middle of the night. Uh -huh. um, maybe like 3 o'clock up or? Uh, more midnight to 1. More midnight to 1. 3 a.m. is, again, the, so these books have this kind of particular... Um, information. I can look up in my big book of homeopathic remedies, like which remedies are for someone waking up at three in the morning. They might yeah. give me a dozen remedies that are that have that as yeah, a yeah. potential symptom to treat. So the, the one that I use most for three in the morning would be uh, um, one called Nux vomica, which is uh, which is a poison nut. I'm talking about this yeah, poison. Yeah, 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 but anyway, yeah. um, again, it doesn't matter where it came from. It's all perfectly safe, inexpensive, non-patentable. No one's making big money off homeopathy because they're they're just these things that are not patentable. They're, they've been around for yes, a long it, time. It's a really <clears throat> a terrifically inexpensive medicine. Right. Like and powerful medicine. If your kid eats the whole bottle, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even if it's in down on the bottle, yeah. it still doesn't matter. <laughs> so you use various different remedies, uh, depending on like what time the person might wake up. Right. Or, and the coffee remedy. So you said the if coffee, a person, yeah, right. coffee, person, yeah. you, you were mentioning if a person wakes up at three and feels like they had been Jangle. drinking coffee, then yeah. you might use the coffee. I might, exactly. Yeah. So, th so that's the few, but know that there are more. And if you buy a book, there, there are books out there on, on how to use homeopathy. I think there's one called Everybody's Guide to Homeopathy yeah. by Dana Ullman, which I like a lot. And um, it'll have a whole chapter on sleep, or a whole chapter on right. digestive problems, a whole chapter on childhood illnesses, or all kinds of things that are just, it's so empowering to have a thing in your, and then I have a kit that has multi, like 30 remedies yes, in yes, it, yes. and then I can just, you, I, 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 that's how I treated my kids. Yeah. Was, with homeopathy for the bulk of their yes, it's such problems. a it's such a life supporting thing. It is. So maybe you'll get a book. Maybe you'll look at homeopathy. We can certainly add it to your bone program. And you, if you have a problem where you say, "Look, I really want a, a remedy for my whole body, a deep constitutional remedy for my body, mind, and spirit," you might think of finding a classic homeopath like Dr. Demers. <laughs> uh, again, she's at the Himalayan Institute. She does talk with people all over the world through Skype and other internet services, or you can come right here to Honesdale, Pennsylvania. But we want to thank you very much for taking the time to be thank with us. Thank you so much. May the whole world have better health, and I think homeopathy will be part of that. It will be a big Indeed. part. See you all later.